how to approach them. Let's take a closer look now with our friend Tiffany McGee, CEO and CIO of Pivotal Advisors and a CNBC contributor. All right, here we go. It's kind of like a rapid fire or some sort of fast money segment, but let's do it anyway. Uh, DoorDash, what was your takeaway on the dash? Yeah, so, you know, first of all, kind of coming into today, everybody's kind of thinking about, you know, what what is earnings season going to be? What, what's the fourth quarter going to be for DoorDash? And so I thought about, like, they exceeded my expectations in Q3 of 2022. Um, you know, their monthly active users beat um, both quarter to date and, and year to date. Um, in Q3, their Dash Pass members hit an all-time high. So that's their subscription model. Um, and they really surprised me, exceeded my expectations last quarter. And it looks like, you know, they were, they're definitely, they definitely did the same in this quarter. So I, you know, read the highlights, but I'm a person who really likes to listen to the earnings calls because I like to hear the sentiment of management. So I'm going to go back tonight since I didn't have time to listen to it and listen to everything and really kind of get my takeaway from that. But they did do a good job. Um, I think that, you know, I'm really, I really want to kind of drill down on their acquisition of Wolt. So Wolt is a European company, food, uh, food and home delivery. And that really positions them to kind of take advantage of that international market. That's a really fast growing company. Right before they acquired them, they went from like two markets, like two countries to like something like like uh, like 20 or 30 countries. Um, and that was a really great acquisition from them. I think there's a really strong case for continued growth moving forward. And here's kind of like my my take on DoorDash, because an earlier guest on CNBC earlier today said, you know, look, people are not going to be spending money on um, on uh, on food delivery. And I think when people look at a company like DoorDash, they kind of put it in the context of um, this is uh, in terms of household budget. This is um, uh, the restaurant spend. And it's not the restaurant spend. The restaurant spend is when you want to go out and have a good time and have an experience. This is, listen, it's Wednesday. I've got to get food on the table. I have some extra work to do. I've got to get these kids' homework done. Let me order. And you're not going to go pick it up, right? So there's that. I don't think that's going away anytime soon. Um, but then DoorDash, it, it, really the whole space, in addition to Uber Eats, offers this marketplace. So even if you don't want to go pick up the food, you have this marketplace of all of the food delivery, of all the food places around you where you can choose from. I don't remember, Brian, the last time I said, you know what, I want to order food. Let me think of a restaurant and let me call that restaurant and order food. I always go to Uber Eats or DoorDash, right? And yeah. I think that's kind of like the trend coming right now. Um, so yeah. I, I did see some stats, like the number of drivers that sample your food while they're driving. I mean, if I was driving, like, oh, I would be, no, I'm, I, you can Google it. I, I, I'm just saying, if I was driving, if <laughs> I was driving around all the time, I'd be like, well, she's not going to miss three fries. Munch. Okay. All right. So, you know, I I'm need just, you on my analyst team then, Brian. I'm just, listen, no, what do I know? I'm just saying, Google it. I'm just saying, no companies, okay, no well, names. That, just, I'm just, I saw this thing. Anyway, next up, let's switch gears. Applied materials earnings, they just hit the tape. All right, AMAT, it's a big semiconductor equipment manufacturing company. So yeah. we talked to them, we always lump them in with semiconductors, but not really. They, they make the stuff that makes the semiconductor. They do, they do. And so, you know, they, they, they make the components and then for, for the semiconductor companies to kind of go ahead and put them together and, and do what they do. And so, you know, but that whole entire industry, they have there's some elements associated with that that are really kind of difficult to predict. There's lots of volatility. There's this subject to kind of like, like business cycle risk, kind of timing. If you think about how long it even takes to make or actually recalibrate a semiconductor, this is not something that is like a flip of a switch. So there's so much uncertainty involved. Uh, but if you believe in the semi industry that, that it's growing, um, and I, I definitely do, this is probably a name that warrants some attention. Um, but what I don't like about them um, is their revenue growth, their history of revenue growth. It's about uh, roughly about like eight, sorry, eleven point eight percent a year. But when you look at the median of the sector of the group, it's over sixteen percent. And I really am not in love with their gross profit margins at about forty six percent compared to that median of the group, which is on the which is about like forty nine percent. So I'm going to need them to kind of you know, kind of expand their margins a little bit and to see a little bit more um, revenue growth in line with their peers. Okay. Now, finally, we're going to do stock number three, and that is DraftKings. DraftKings getting a good response. After hour, stock's up 5%. Not everybody, not every state it's legal, but it appears that in the states where gambling is legal, everybody's gambling. You know what? They are. So they actually just came to Maryland, which is the state that I live in, and they're flooding like 
the the airways with with commercials with celebrities. So they're they clearly have a huge market uh, marketing spend. Um, but listen, I I am so first of all, you know, my clients, as you know, are foundations and endowments. They are really about um, having their portfolio in line with their values. So um, some of them would exclude a company like DraftKings. We're not excluding it for everybody. Um, but for me, uh, I think that the profitability of DraftKings is going to take a little bit longer for that gaming profitability. I need some states, like some more states to open back up. So I'm gonna wait a little while and kind of see how this year plays out. Um, and I'm really interested, it won't show won't be, um, it won't won't be show up in, in Q4's earning report, but to see how they did with uh, Super Bowl betting and also March Madness coming up. Okay, three stocks, general portfolio comment, positioning, what are we doing now? How do we look? Yeah, so Brian, you know, I'm always about having investors having your strategic asset allocation, which is your long-term asset allocation that you set and you kind of forget, but that does not mean you can't make little shifts in terms of tactical moves. So diversification, you, you've heard me speak about this ad, ad nauseum. And so it's really less about adding asset classes that are winning right now and more about adding asset classes that have exposure to different types of risks. So yeah. the 60 portfolio, 70-30 portfolio, equities, bonds, Yes, we expect bonds to, to, to really kind of do a better job this year, but we need to introduce some different asset classes. We need to introduce things like REITs. There are ETFs that cover every single thing imaginable. So do your research, get some other things into your portfolio.